Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Into the Forge. Today we're going to be building a map which I saw over on the channel WASD20 by Nate. Um, he takes some beads and stuff and lays them out and I'm just going to put this here to signify a lake and pour all these out on the map. And uh, once you pour them all out, you just kind of move them around and make uh, like a continent sort of how you like so I made an island over here and spaced these out just so that way uh, you got you know a base shape so I'm just gonna trace around these and um, you don't have to put something in the middle and you can do it as freely and or openly as you'd like and any of these open spaces I'm just gonna circle in make them into maybe some more lakes or a forest perhaps um, so then I'm just going in and adding some detail on the map, some mountains on the island there, and uh, adding some rivers that come out of that central sea or lake. I haven't decided what it is yet. And adding uh, another little forest in the center there that the lake bends around. Adding some mountains and... Uh, a bigger mountain all the way over there and some a big old forest <clears throat> and just adding some details that way the map's more alive and uh, when the players or you look at it it looks more you know open so now I'm gonna outline everything in uh, sharpie so that way it's easier to see um, and you don't have to use a sharpie, this thick one. You could also use a very fine tip, um, or you could keep it in pencil. I just think it makes it easier to see everything this way. <clears throat> and then after that, you can erase everything, just so you know, it looks very uh, well done. <clears throat> so now I'm going in with a smaller fine tip one, and all those little features like the mountains there, you know, emphasizing those so they're not as thick but still add detail to each little part of the map and stippling a little bit to show it's like a deserty sandy area and over here just adding uh, a mountain range and making this part into like a beach area adding all the little details on the mountains and as you can see, the one all the way up in the right is uh, a very detailed mountain. That's going to be a very uh, important part of this campaign that I'm starting. So some of the areas I circled in, I decided instead of having a lot of lakes, uh, I'm making them into a forest area. And this big one up here is going to be where a lot of uh, wild enemies make their home and the big ferocious things that live in the forest you know go there so that's gonna be like uninhabited area uh, and down here I'm just gonna add some more forest and you can add things that you didn't maybe have before I just thought it looked a little empty so I decided I wanted to add some some more forests over there and then for the ocean I'm just adding some more detail there and on the continent up in the left I thought same thing it looked a little boring so I added a mountain range going along the middle alright now I'm just gonna add uh, some names of things different continents and stuff and for the name of the world I think it'll be called propylene um, And uh, up next, we'll name the, uh, let's see, <laughs> I will go with this bay area, the salt brick brine is what I think they'd name it, because the water is very salty, almost like a salt brick. Um, up here is the wilds, and as I said, this is where like the big ferocious beasts of the forests live pretty much un, uh, uninhabited area. 
This will be called Maiden's Shimmer. It has like a, a nice glow to it. Um, this will be the Cinder Point. And this is just like a big desert island. And now I'm just going to add some town names. So this will be a bigger town, like a almost like a capital. And that's why I put a, a different symbol there. And let's go ahead and call this one, uh, let's see, Telton. And up next, we'll add another little X over next to it. And call this one Dogmead. And when you name stuff kind of unique like that, it's fun to give it uh, like a reason why. And I'm thinking <laughs> there'll be some story on how that came to be. Like uh, <laughs> their mead is made with partially, partially, uh, partially, bleh, sorry, part of it is dog piss. And uh, up that up top, I named that Mount Guru. Um, and then I'll name this High Hill. It'll kind of be in the mountains, but not on there. And over here, we'll name this one Codport. Um, a big fishing town. And down here, Swallow Harbor. Something right on the, the coast there. And let's see. Hmm. I think on this co this little continent will be called Ice Mark. It'll be a very uh, frigid place, where instead of like a desert mountain, it's more of those icy, frozen mountains. And down here, we're gonna start with a town called Sebusan, and a little above it will be Zion. And in the forest here, it'll be called Oak Feather. And Right here, we'll go with a town called Delver's Dale, which is from uh, another map I saw online, and I just really like the idea of it. I, In my mind, I picture it as like a retirement home for adventurers, <laughs> and I think that'd be a cool little thing to do. And um, now I'm just going to connect these with like a path, you know, with a little dotted line to show a common common uh, ways people travel throughout and although Mount Guru is a dangerous place I'll say it is has a path there because uh, the guards of Telton are in a war actually with who the inhabitants of Mount Guru alright and now I'm just going to do the same thing down here add a uh, path connecting all of those points so from Oak Feather to Zion, and then Zion to Sebusan, and then one going uh, towards Swallow Harbor. And now I'm going to add a couple well known places up in Ice Mark. So over here, I'm going to name this one Winter Tip. And then over in this edge, uh, I'm going to make it a little less icy and call this Brave Stick Valley which is a tribute to one of my friend's characters. <laughs> he said he lived up in a icy part, but <laughs> he decided to call it Valley. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one, everybody.